Jeff Lutz with me. I'm Bob Lutz, the main host. 869-1240 is the phone number. Jeff uh, busy watching his Guardians attempt a sixth inning rally to overcome the Minnesota Twins and wrap up a playoff spot in the American League. Uh, how are things going today? Your schizophrenic view of the Guardians. Where are you today? I don't know if it's schizophrenic. I just want to get this uh, business taken care of. I want to fly ball right here and not a terrible swing and get a run in and let's let's move it along. And Well, you just chased the ball six feet high, so I don't know what's going to you know, happen. Rocchio got the game-winning hit last night. He's trying to be a little bit of a hero again. Not uh, the you Listen, know. you do what you got to do in this game. Am I right? You do what you got to do in this game. You couldn't be more right. <laughs> what a what an app description. Pretty vague, but uh, you get it. I sure do. Uh, so here's what we have for you on the show today. Let's just jump right into it. Tyson Barley from Heston. They're they're off to a two and zero start. And Tyson Barley extremely enthused about being on our really? show. Really? Yeah. See the coach. He is the head coach. Well, Matt Tate will join us. Uh, we'll talk some uh, Kansas football with somebody who's been covering it uh, for quite some time. Well, we better block out hour number two for that one. Yeah, he likes to talk, but that's okay. That is okay. We Matt love it. Tate from Wave the Wheat. So we'll uh, get Matt Tate's thoughts on where the Jays are as they head into a Saturday game at West Virginia. And then coming up in hour number two, we'll have picks. I reached out to Anthony very early this morning to see if you could possibly do the show. And uh, here we are at 202, nothing. Interesting. Kid works a lot of hours. I guess he does. Works strange hours. I don't know what his I don't know what his situation is. He works really. uh, works late. Works late. Works early. I don't know. Just I don't know. No, really he's don't. fighting his he's fighting his way through. That's what we all got to do. You do what you do. You got to do in this life, right? Very people. Very few people can live independently, well off like me. No, oh, is that right? Are you independent? I am. I got to figure out a uh, few things, but uh, we're making our way. Proud of you. Well, are you really? Sure. What are we talking about? Somebody uh, came to our building today and said, how long are you going to do this? And I said, I don't know. Is that their only reason for showing up? No, that's part Just of the to pepper conversation. You with... uh, I said, I don't know. I, and I don't know. We, nobody knows. It's a mystery to me. I guess as long as I can, right? Much of life is a mystery. Um... I don't really have anything. What do you got? <laughs> you don't have anything? We're just at the start of the show. You're going to have to come up with something. Well, I got, I got we stuff. Two but two hours. Uh, you didn't quite get what you wanted to get done there. Head is, is fi that's fine. Looks like a beautiful day in uh, Cleveland. Got the top of the order coming up. We'll figure it out. Well, there you go. As uh, they go to the seventh. Royals last night. I guess I'll start there. Uh, this is all, uh, you know, the September baseball is amazing and has been forever because there are teams that completely fall apart in September throughout history, and then there are those teams that somehow find it. Can't and really the predict Detroit it, Tigers though. have found it. They're winning. They're playing extremely well. With a bunch well. of guys that were in the minor leagues earlier in the year. Yeah, and going into Kansas City at this time of the year in a big series like that and sweeping and the Royals. And uh, their, their three main guys, right? I know Lugo and Reagans were the last two. I think Brady Singer Yeah, I'm not sure to be uh, 100% was the first honest. game starter. No, Marsh. It was uh, Lugo, uh, Reagans, and Marsh. Okay. So they, they beat Marsh last night. Uh, but they swept that series. They're within a half game of the Twins. Twins got to have this. They're, they're and on the flip side of catching fire, you got the Minnesota Twins. They're doing the opposite of that. Who are sinking quickly, like a stone? Is that what you're trying to no, say? No, I was thinking of the, something more creative. The Royals play today. Go to the uh, simple stuff. But I, I'll admit, I couldn't come up with anything more creative. So I said quickly. Sinking quickly. But if I said sinking like a stone, half the audience... Ah, well, what else a, sinks? Well, uh, that, that's a tried. That's not imaginative. Well, neither is sinking quickly, to be honest. 
Well, so I, that's what I said. Who I couldn't come today? up with the anything Royals? better. Do the Tigers play? What's going the on? Royals don't play. Tigers don't play. So they could be tied with Minnesota after the end that's of this correct. game. Uh, the Atlanta Braves do play, and they're leading big on Cincinnati. They're chasing the Mets for that last wild card spot. The Mets are at home against Philadelphia tonight. I think Arizona's tied for that spot, too. No. No. Okay. I don't think you're right. All right. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I'm pretty sure the Mets and the Diamondbacks have the same record. So, I don't know. I'd love to be able to tell you yes, but I think you're wrong. I don't know. I really don't. I just well, Then why'd you pop off? Well, I thought that was the case, and I've, I haven't paid as much attention to what's happening in the American League. Um, in the National League. In the, the National, National League. League. Could you be more? I haven't been paying as much attention, but I'm pretty sure. Right now I you've saw. got uh, in the uh, National League wild card race, you've got the Phillies, Dodgers, and Brewers are leading the division. The Padres uh, are a couple games up on Arizona and the Mets, who are tied, like I said. Thank you. Atlanta is uh, two back. Two back. And they're really the only other team with a chance. Um, so we'll see. That's how, that's how it looks in the National League. Cardinals got one last night. You happy? Are they two over? The only now? reason I'm happy, and I much prefer it when they win. I'm much happier. I'm much. Uh, the only reason I'm happy is because we're getting to see more of of uh, Thomas Sajasi, Jordan Walker, Yvonne Herrera. Although not enough, Herrera should be Pedro Pot. Give, give me a break. I can't wait for this season to be over and for them to get a real baseball person in this organization hopefully yeah i hope it happens for you turn my game off too uh but jordan walker hit a ball last night and he's not a finished product don't get me wrong here he's still hitting below 200 uh, for the whole season but since he's been back up uh, he's hitting close to 275 280 with some power and he hit a ball last night with the bases loaded 116 miles an hour that's impressive your mic needs to be on when you... That's you're... impressive. Why do you do that to your I mic? I just told you yesterday. I forgot to turn it back on when I, after I drank water. I'm a forgetful person. It's, it's alarming at worst. I mean, I don't get it. I, I, I've never forgotten anything. Never? No, I don't forget. You don't forget anything. We had, I don't uh, think that's true. We had a, a group of people in our building today meeting, and uh, one of the young women... I, I like to ask where people are from because I like to know that stuff. And she said she was from Fowler. And I said, oh, home of the, of the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't forget. The home of the, what, what, the gold, bu- the gold bugs or something like it, I think it's the gold bug. It might be. And she's, she was just amazed that I knew that. And I asked her, who's the best football player to ever, ever come out of Fowler high school? And she said, Dave Harris. And I said, you're exactly right. How'd you know that? Why wouldn't she know that? She's from there. And she said, I used to date his son. Oh, wow. (laughs) Isn't that cool? You know what little things you can pick up just by starting a little innocuous conversation? You ought to try it sometime. Well, I'm not going to call you out, but I could. Go ahead. You don't like when you don't like when people do that to you when they put you on the spot and put you me say, on the spot. You just want to you just want to make me look bad and you say all that stuff. So why would you put somebody How else? How can on you the make spot? somebody look bad by asking them where they're from? No, by asking them who's the best football player to come out of Fowler. Ask me. Ask you what? Anything, and I'll I'll tell you. All right, the uh, name the. Two spin doctors hits. No, I want you to ask me something personal. And what album they came that's off not, of? That's not. That's not comparable. How is that ask not me comparable? Personal. You personal. have that CD. I don't remember. Little Miss can't be wrong. Yeah. And, what's the uh, other one? Two word thing. I. Can't, what's it called? Two something. Two. Uh, two princes. Yeah. There, there you go. All right. Now. Ask, full of kryptonite. The there album. you go. Paul, call me. Ask me something. 
personal. What does that mean, personal? Of course you're going to know the answer to Ask a personal me, uh, question. Where'd you uh, go to, you know? I don't understand what we're doing here. Ask me where I went to high school. Where'd you, you go to high school? Yeah, Derby. <laughs> okay, good job. I don't, I don't understand how that equates to... Ask me about a high school memory of some... All right, who, what do you mean? Ask me something about the high same... school. Why? Because I just want you to. No. You never have. So? I'm not you... that interested in your high school years. Really? You... Not really. You know, I went and bought my dad's old yearbook yeah, online. Yeah, you're welcome for that. I found that for you. You're welcome. That's been... I've looked at that many times. Yeah, but that's interesting. You're not interested that's in my the, high school years? That's from years? the 20s. Well, I'm from the 70s. 70s, man. It was nine years before I was born. There's not that much interesting going on then. Really? I don't think so. So there's nothing you want to know? Where we hung out? No. Uh, what we did? Mm-mm. Where we congregated? We dragged Douglas. I know. No, that's all, I'm that's talking all about ever Derby. Did. We had hangouts I'm in sure Derby. I'm sure you dragged Madison. We didn't drag. Dragged Rock. I don't know what we you did. We hung out at Pete's Taco Time. Taco Time? <laughs> Pete's Taco Time. I'm sure it's amazing. They're in El Paso Village. It was phenomenal. That well, sounds great. Sounds and uh, unbelievable. One of my Facebook friends recently posted on her page, the daughter of the owner, Pete Mendoza, uh, posted a photo of Pete serving some people at Pete's Taco Time. Don't you think that's interesting? Taco Time. That's funny. Do you not think that's interesting? Uh, Would you want your daughter to think something about you is interesting? If she does, she does. If she doesn't, she doesn't. Do you tell her anything? If she wants to know Would stuff. Would she know today where you went to high school? Yes. She would be able to tell that? Yeah, absolutely. Good. I'm, I've I'm, told her lots of stories. I'm a little surprised you shared that information. Well, I hope she would know. How about middle school? No, no chance. You want to know where I went? Derby. Derby Junior High. <laughs> yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> want to know where I went to elementary school? Derby. Elementary. Pleasant View Elementary. How many elementaries were in Derby back then? Uh, at the start of my uh, career, my education career, there were two, Pleasant View and Swaney. And then they added uh, El Paso. Do you have any friends at Swaney? I didn't get across town that often. Were they? I was over on the south side of Derby. Yeah. I played baseball. Weird how that worked back in the day. I didn't have any friends at other elementary schools outside of maybe some people I played sports with. Yeah, that's how you got to know other people. But most of my friends were at my school. Sure. Duh. It's not, it doesn't work that way anymore. Why? For Kids have friends all over the place. Social media, I guess. Exactly. That's why it's called social media. If you want to call it that. Well, I mean, there's some good aspects of social media. Couple. Yesterday, all the J.D. Souther uh, tributes were very good, and I enjoyed them enormously. Even mine? Mm. <laughs> I'm talking about the people who knew him. I get it. And I enjoyed uh, reading those and some video clips that were put up. It was uh, enjoyable. That's, the, that's when uh, X or Twitter, that's when it stands out. Well, you got to go and try to appreciate those people while they're, while they're still here. Well, I do. Good. What does that mean? I'm just saying, you know, it's it's sad. You don't want it to be a sad occasion after somebody dies and you see these clips. Well, but and... I, don't, nobody's posting about J.D. Souther in, uh, before he passed away. Well, they should be. That's what I'm saying. What do you mean they should be? I'm sure there were people, but when somebody passes away... Throughout the t uh, annals of time, the, uh, you have the, uh, the, the acknowledgement and the respect. It's weird. That's why they have eulogies at funerals. They, that's the way it happens. Before I found it's out. It's too bad that those uh, people who have passed away don't get to hear it. They, get to, they, they, they don't get to hear it. Right. So maybe tell them before they're gone. So I just... Would you like to do that with me right now? Uh, I thought I have. Not really. It's weird. I was on a, when bef it was the day of, but uh, before we found out, because we found out the following day, the following morning that J.D. Souther, Souther, Souther 
had it's passed. Not, you're disrespecting it. I don't believe that it is Souther. You're you're disrespecting. I think it. S-O-U-T-H is South. Did you not watch all the videos E-R. that pronounced his name? Yes. Did you not do that? I, I mean, there's I not one. I played you a Glenn Fry one where he says South. There's not one. No, he didn't. <laughs> to me, he did. J.D. Souther. Duda didn't believe it. Yeah, Duda's. Anyway, I was on a big new kid in town kick that day, which is ironic, I guess. Uh, good. J.D. Souther co-wrote that song for the Eagles. And uh, there you go. But, I mean, let's get it right. Let's get let's get it straight. Let's be factual. I still will go to my grave thinking it's Souther. I don't think you will. Souther. Listen, the Eagles will pay tribute to him. Listen to what they say. Tomorrow. They're not, the, Don it, Henley's not going to get up there. My buddy J.D. Souther. No. It, it's just not going to happen. Well, we'll find out, except I don't think I will. Why? I'm not sure I'm going to... Seek anything out. I don't know what I'm going to oh, do. Oh, you will. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, this is a different ball game for well, me. I just saw Leonard had called and hung up. Leonard, my apologies. I didn't check my phone. That's uh, on us, Leonard. Leonard, if you want to give us a call right back, we're ready. We're ready to go. Think it was Skinnerd? Don't be an idiot. Well, Skinnerd's name is Leonard. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It is? Yes. Lenny? It's Leonard. Lynn? Yeah, we haven't for, heard from Skinner in forever. Maybe now that I've outed him, he'll. Uh, we call. we haven't heard from Ku Pat, and nope. uh, that bothers me some. Yeah, especially that one, that one bothers me. Especially yeah. he didn't call yesterday when Duda was here. What's the deal? No, no, it's not about Duda. It's but he about, usually does call when Duda's here. It's about he hasn't called us since football season started. Well, we hope he's okay. That's that's always where I go. I don't want to think too darkly, but yeah, you, you just hope he's okay. I feel like we would have found out if he wasn't. I used to get I get emails from him quite often. I haven't gotten one of those in a while. Well, that's not good. I don't know. So if anybody knows about uh, KU Pat or KU Pat, if you're listening, and you've been one of our most loyal listeners, uh, just to ease our minds. Just give us a call. Be good to hear from you. Exactly. Say that again, Andrew. It is Leonard Skinner. Hello, <laughs> Skinner. Uh, how do? So that's Andy answering the phone. Andrew, Andy, Andrew, yeah. Well, if if you're gonna he's call me Leonard, you, you know, so. I... well, wow. he probably doesn't know you. Did he did he object nope. to you calling yourself Skinner? What's going on? No, I'm not getting into that guy's mind. Okay, I want to. Some of us are out here toiling, and I'm I have no time to waste while cutting corn. But you brought up Dave Harris, Bob. What saying, what KU track athlete did he mar- who did he, who did he marry? If you need uh, a clue, a I'll one. give you one. Would you like a give clue? It. I can't. Yeah, I won't be able to think of it, but I know I can see her. She was a hurdler my, uh, from Norwich. Mom. She was a hurdler yeah, from Norwich. Yeah, give me her and name. Her name I'm not going to be able to. Th- her first name and last name both begin with L. And you told me that you're not losing your memory. We all are. Lisa uh, Lowry. Give me her name, Skinner. There you go, Lisa, Lisa Lowry. Lowry. Yeah, I, I hey, got you guys. You. Uh, Okay, I'm giving you one report about KU Pat. Him and I both called a, another sports talk radio station the other morning. And uh, I was first, and he followed up. So, Wow, what are you guys doing? Full of, he's still full of his KU stuff, but, you know, he cries every year that he's given up his season tickets. <laughs> I don't what know. Are We're just, what are you doing? Yeah, why are you calling other stations? What's that all about? Well, there, there well why are there other stations? That's a great because question. Because I like, I like to be a thorn. Okay. <laughs> all right, Skinner. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll see we you. Have to take a break. We got to get who's, to uh, whose disloyalty are you more alarmed by in that situation? I don't like disloyalty. Tyson Barley, 
the head football coach at Heston, joins us. Heston 2-0. and They've beaten Halstead and Hoisington. They have Hillsboro this week. Then they run out of teams, uh, towns that start with the letter H. It's crazy. Hey, Tyson, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, we're doing well. We want we like to reach out to coaches we haven't talked to before. Uh, you're off to a good start, two and zero. You play in a very uh, solid league, the Central Kansas League. You have uh, maybe your arch rival. I, I think that's fair to say. Hillsboro coming up uh, this week at home. Uh, how are things looking? Yeah, things are things are rolling pretty well over here. You're, you're right with the H towns. We kind of got a battle of H towns going on right now. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could argue whether it's it's Halstead or Hillsborough as our as our main rivalry. It's kind of just who we're playing next, really, when it comes down to those guys. You've won a couple of close games, and that kind of started for you last year, uh, kind of in the second half of last year. You were pulling those games out uh, that were closer. What's been maybe the difference since then, and how has it kind of carried over to this year? And what's the difference in those games between uh, winning them and 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 coming up short? Yeah, you saw it last year about midway through the season. We really just kind of started to click a little bit. Um, guys started to fulfill some roles last year that were new. You know, it took them a couple games to kind of get going, and then, um, you know, they got comfortable, they gained the confidence, and that has carried over through our off season. And the difference is this year is, is not that we didn't expect to win last year, but it's just a whole different mentality with these guys. We returned uh, 37 guys from the roster from last year um, that – they gained that experience, they gained that confidence, and um, I mean the off-season workouts it was just a different feel. The beginning of camp was a different feel, um, and, and our guys come out; they're not panicking at all. They expect to win. I mean, last week we were down ten nothing after five offensive snaps because of turnovers, and, and I, I never felt that our confidence was wavering. I never felt that we had an issue or anything like that. I just, I just saw guys like rally and say, "Hey, all right, let's go, let's get after it," and that's what they've done. Tyson uh, Bowerly is our guest. He's the head football coach at Heston and has been doing that uh, for quite a while. So what is it about that community, Tyson? Tell us a little bit about your background. Are you a native Heston uh, person, Hestonian? Is that what we call them? Uh, Tell us (laughs) about your background. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not from Heston. Uh, in fact, I grew up not liking Heston because I grew up in Nickerson. So uh, we always <laughs> played them. Uh, and I think maybe in one game in high school, we beat them. Um, maybe my sophomore year, I'd have to look back again. But um, in football, we never beat them in basketball, and they didn't have baseball back then. So uh, yeah, I grew up in, in Nickerson, very familiar with the area, very familiar with a lot of the uh, the coaches that have been around for a long time. My dad was a girls' basketball coach, so I kind of lived that life knowing what, what that took and just kind of took on to, to teaching and coaching and following kind of his footsteps. But uh, I was at Sterling for 10 years, actually. That was my first job and then uh, came over here. This is my eighth year now at Heston. I'm interested in, in your quarterback. He's a sophomore, Jarek Humphreys. Uh, he got into a game last year, so he did get some a little bit of experience as a freshman. Uh, how is he as a leader? I know he's a, a three-sport athlete as well, so uh, tell us about him a little bit. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about Jarek Humphreys. Um, you know, he, he kind of got the, the opportunity because our, our senior got hurt. Um, you know, R- Reed Friesen was – leading us last year, doing a great job, and he gets hurt on the very first uh, Saturday of practice that we had on the very last play, just kind of a, a sickening situation, just a freak accident. And he goes down and is, is going to be gone for the year. So, um, you know, Jarek, as a sophomore, I, I've told a lot of people this, Jarek as a sophomore is the most advanced sophomore in the system that, that we've ever had, that I've ever had as a coach. Um, we've done a lot to merge our middle school and high school uh, programs and staffs over the last couple of years. So Jarek has been in the system since seventh grade. And I mean, you can tell as a sophomore, he's, he's reading things. He's seeing things that, that other sophomore quarterbacks have not been able to do. And he, he's done a phenomenal job stepping in, um, you know, in, in that class, in his sophomore class, if you ask who the leader is, everybody knows it's Jarek. I mean, they're going to say it, it's him in, in any sport. I mean, you said he was a three sport athlete yeah, in any sport. He's going to have the ball in his hands at the end of the game when you want it, and he's, he's done a tremendous job leading, stepping in, and, and making some really big throws and, and big reads. And it's fun seeing a kid like that who's doing things the right way. He gets an opportunity, and, man, he's rolling with it right now. 
Tyson Bowerly is our guest. He's the head football coach at Heston. Heston 2-0 and facing Hillsboro in Heston on Friday night, tomorrow night. So I'm, I'm always curious to talk to coaches that I've talked to for the first time, and uh, you fall into that category. In 3A, you've got Andale, which is just traditionally crazy. Cheney has, uh, Shelby Werman has built uh, a juggernaut in Cheney. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got Wichita Collegiate, which is always uh, very solid. You've got three really tried and true programs that do it about every year. When you're the head coach at Heston, are you trying to get to that level or are you just trying to get to the highest level you can get to? No, we, we have our sights on those guys right there. And our off-season studies as a staff, our adjustments that we make, um, our summer training, I mean, everything is not let's go beat, you know, that 7-3 and three team. It's let's go beat that team that, that's undefeated. Let's go beat that team that's been up there for years. Yeah, that's, that's what we're after. That's what, our, that's what our kids are after this year, too, and it's been fun to see that. That makes it more fun. That makes it more fun for everybody, right? If you uh, you look at those schools and you look at those programs, and I'm sure you feel like I do that, man, what they built there is incredible. But let's try to join them, right? Absolutely, yeah. And you know, I, we've got 11 seniors on the roster um, coming into this year. They've recognized, you know, their high school careers. We've been 19 and 19, and they've all said, you know, that's that's not good enough. That's not where it's not what we're after. That's not why we work so hard. That's not what we're doing. Um, and guys like Carter Gonzalez, who's leading the way, who's being the voice of the team, and it's like, man, it's yeah, you know, we're rolling with you guys. You guys have the high expectations. We've talked about expecting more from yourself, and they've done that. Um, and yeah, it's like you said, that's what we're after, and that's what we're going for. So, assuming you can tell uh, Hillsboro apart from all the other eight schools that you've, you, you've been playing. Um, how, how big is this rivalry? How much do you kind of circle this one? Uh, you've won the last couple games in this, in this rivalry that last year was a really close, close game. So how much do you guys get amped up for this one? Yeah, we'll be amped up for this one. It's always a great matchup in, in any sport, really, with, with these guys. Because, I mean, we're so close. Everybody knows each other. Uh, it's interesting how many – Hillsboro families are in Heston and how many Heston families are now in Hillsboro, you know, it's just kind of growing up in different, different places and, and moving towns. But um, yeah, we've had a lot of close games over the last couple of years. Um, a lot of like those games where just weird stuff happens, you know, it's like, you know, whether it's trick plays or, you know, weird turnovers or, you know, whatever it is, but there's been a lot of those over the last couple of years. So, you know, we were up big last year early. It was 25, seven. And then we just couldn't hang on. We couldn't do anything right in the second half. And they kept on, kept on plugging away and, and came down to a late interception for us to seal the deal. So um, we, we're going to be ready. They're going to be ready. It's our first home game. It'll be nice to finally play at Hobbs Stadium. And, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a good environment. Tyson Byerly with us. Uh, you, you mentioned you're from Nickerson. That's your opponent uh, a week from tomorrow. Uh, how yeah. many times have you coached against your alma mater and – and uh, uh, you, have, you have a good record in those games? I believe it's twice. Uh, and now uh, Mike Vernon, who's now at Hutch, um, was, the last time, was the last head coach that had faced over there. And he had Nickerson rolling for a couple of years before he went to Hutch. And they, they've got us, I believe. I believe I'm 0-2 against them. So I'm, I'm looking forward to facing them. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun. I've got family still over there. My nephew is actually a linebacker on the team. So it'll be fun to face them. That will be fun. Well, it's really good to, to get to know you. You've uh, you're off to a very good start. Uh, we like it when uh, we have schools uh, to talk about that maybe we don't traditionally get to very often. Tyson, thank you so much. Best of luck Friday night and throughout the rest of the season. All right, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about my guys. You bet, Tyson Bowerly from Heston High School, two and zero. Oh. It's a nice community down over in Heston. I enjoy Heston. When's the last time you went there? Oh, it's been a long time, but... Did you ever cover a game there? Covered games, tennis, a lot of stuff in Heston. I'm not sure I ever did cover a game in Heston. Really? I like their football Seems like I did. It seems like I remember uh, maybe Heston being a place where it was difficult to get out of the stadium after a game because they may have locked me in. 
That's a problem. I don't know why that comes to mind. I'm not. I'm not at all sure of that. Why would they have locked you in? What were you doing out there? Well, you take a little. You know, I mean, I was pretty fast on deadline, but uh, sometimes the maintenance people don't want to hang around. If I handed you one of those little, what were those things? Radio even Shack, whatever they were. Would you know how to start a story? What do you mean? Like you got to type in a little code thing. No. What do you mean? You got to type in like the slug and stuff. The radio, no, I've forgotten all that. You had to go bracket, left bracket, SL, space, something. Story, That's I, I think remember. that was your story name at that point. I don't remember the rest. There was a space between the SL yeah. and the uh, whatever you typed in that. And then it was like ET at the end. Something like that. It was, it's more, it was, more, it was uh, three letters. Do you remember the 1-800 number to get to the... Which, yeah, 800-825-6397. Yeah, that's correct. Do you remember, There's all kinds of stuff you remember in your my number? brain. 800-268. No, not 800. 316-268. What was it? 6597. Yeah, it was. I uh, put it out on Facebook yesterday. I was driving home and stuck in traffic and just... Uh, trying to okay, let, let's let's sing a song, and I started singing some kind of wonderful. And I didn't—that's the one you picked. Yeah, I don't know why. Why? Tell me I why. Don't know. What? What is the brain? It's it, so. I didn't even remember picking it. I often wake up with songs in my head because they were in my dreams. This one, uh, I don't. I don't think this was the case. No sub. And I had appearance. no idea. No idea. That I knew all the words to it. Do you? Did and you sing I sang it straight it through? Straight through. I mean, how does that song start? I uh, tell me. <laughs> I'm asking you. Seriously, either. this may have been a moment where it just all came together. I don't need. Yeah, I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a big fast car. Fine car. I got everything that a man could need. I got Watch. more than I could ask for. Yeah, that was bad. That was good. <laughs> was it? That wasn't bad. Man, if you knew all these words, I'd be, no, there's no chance. But I believe that you knew how to, there's so many words no, in I this No, I sang song. it straight through. There's no way. I did. There's no way. Look how long this song is. I mean, it just goes on forever. I don't need to stay out that. at night. I got, got me a sweet, a sweet loving woman. And she knows just how to treat me right. Oh, well, my baby, she's all right. Oh, well, my we baby. Call it break? Don't we have somebody else clean out. to talk we'll to? We'll take a break. Now, that was good. Was it? Yes. I think so. It's interesting. Of course, I, I have a uh, different word for it. But what do you mean? Nothing. You didn't like it? Oh, I loved it. I wonder if my wife liked it. She's my ultimate test. Yeah, she would always say if she doesn't like something. Uh, all right, we're going to talk uh, some Kansas football here uh, with Matt Tate, longtime KU beat writer, uh, been around the KU programs for many, many years, currently with Wave the Wheat. And uh, hello, Matt. Good afternoon. How you guys doing? We're doing Good. okay. So there's been a lot of alarms going off around KU football, and I'm going to try to quell the uh, the panic with this statement. None of these losses, and they've lost consecutive games to Illinois and UNLV, were inside the Big 12, obviously. That, uh, that first Big 12 game is this Saturday morning at West Virginia. And they drew maybe the weakest Big 12 schedule of any team in the Big 12. So, given all that, what's the feeling about KU right now? Well, it definitely depends on who you ask. Um, and, and I think you have, to, you have to throw that out there like you just did because with conference realignment, who knows who's in what conference anymore. So, I'm glad you clarified that. Um, but, but, yeah, it depends on who you ask. Look, the fans are freaking out. There's no... The, you know, not all of them, of course. Um, it, it might be a, a vocal minority kind of thing, but that that's uh, that tends to be the loudest and most representative group of any fan base. Um, and, and they're definitely panicked, um, especially in the aftermath of last week's loss to uh, UNLV 
you know, they wanted Jalen Daniels bench. They wanted Jeff Grimes head on a plate. And anything less than that wasn't going to be good enough for them. Maybe they've calmed down a little in the days since, but they they are still very, very panicked. And I, I think it's uh, it's understandable because that's what fans do. Um, but but what's funny to me is is you you just pointed out exactly what everybody is and, and, and with reasonable thinking should be focused on, and that's the fact that nothing's really lost yet. Um, they win the next nine games. It's still one of the best seasons in school history. Maybe they don't think they're going to win the next nine games because of the way the last two went, but I, I wouldn't put it past this team at all. Uh, it's still a talented team. If anything, they're, they're more – eyes wide open and awake and, and, and locked in than, than ever right now because of what happened in the last two games. And, you know, they just have to play better. But the talent is there. The schedule is there. Um, and, and how quickly we forget, gentlemen, if they go, let's say, you know, let's say they, they drop a couple more and they finish this season eight and four. You know, in the eyes of a lot of fans, that's going to be a really disappointing outcome. And, and I promise you, that over the last 15 years, eight and four wasn't even anything people could realistically talk about. So, like I said, how quickly we forget how bad it was and, uh, and, and also how far they've come. So, you know, they got to go one game at a time. It's cliche as heck, but, but that's what they have to do. If they do that, build a little momentum, then, yeah, they, they could absolutely still be a contender in the Big 12. And, and you know, it has to start with better quarterback play and, and if they get that, um, I, I think they, they would have won both of the games they lost. So it, it, it's very much all still in front of them. What is fair to expect from Jalen Daniels? We know how talented he is. We know how well that he's played in the past. But he's had two pretty significant injuries. And no matter how talented you are, or young or in shape, that can take a toll on your body. We know he's probably still knocking off some rust. So uh, is it as simple as, hey, good quarterback play and, the, and, and they're in these games or they win these games? Or is that maybe uh, a tougher task to come by over the first month or two of the season? Well, you know, yeah, it, it, it definitely is. And, and again, they're, they're, the, the fans are heavily critical of offensive coordinator Jeff Grimes right now, but the bottom line is if Jalen didn't throw it to the other team as much, nobody's even talking about Grimes today. So Lance Leipold has gone out of his way to make sure people understand this isn't on one kid. It's not on one person. It's, it's, it's the mistakes and, and the, the one and two start. No one single person is to blame for that, and it's also not on one person to – you know, bounce back or, or, or elevate themselves from that. So that's good coaching. That's, that's how you have to look at it. But, but there's no doubt that the quarterback play has to be better. Um, and, and, you know, Jalen's competitive and he's tough and, and he's been through a lot mentally, um, physically too. Uh, you know, I, I, I've talked to a few of his teammates this week and, and I can tell you for sure that, that those guys aren't worried about him in the least bit. I mean, they, they believe he is – the, the dynamic, explosive, uh, efficient, talented quarterback that, that we all believe he is and that we've seen him to be at times in the past. But I think what's so important, and you talked about the rust, um, you know, everyone knows he missed a lot of last year and, and a chunk of the season before, but I, I did the math. I mean, um, he's only, he only played a half in the, in the opener this year because they were rolling over Lindenwood, and so he played the first half, and that was good enough. Um, so, so if you treat that as a half game, he's played six and a half games in the last 22 months. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just really, really hard to ask anybody to be at their best when you've played that little in that big chunk of time like that. I mean, it, 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 it is a process. It is something that he's going to have to work through. And, 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 you know, if he hadn't thrown those interceptions, maybe he'd be there right now. But I, I think there's – there's definitely it appears that there's definitely a part of him that that you know he's questioning himself he's doubting himself and he's a, a really really confident kid so I'm sure that makes him feel pretty uncomfortable um, and he's saying all the right things and he's trying to you know talk like he's not questioning it or concerned about his own ability and all that and and that's what good players do and, and what leaders do and all that stuff but you know inside his head there's there's it's just human nature that you have to think he's probably a little bit concerned or, or shy or whatever it is about 
hey, am I, am I still the same guy? And, and it could be subconscious thoughts or it could be, you know, banging on the front of his brain or, or whatever it is. But, but either way, um, you know, he, he's got to find a way to get some rhythm going. And, you know, he's shown moments. He's had some really good throws and he's had some really good drives. And he ran a couple of touchdowns in and looked good doing that last week. Uh, but he just hasn't found that rhythm yet and hasn't been able to sustain it. And, and then that one mistake comes and it kind of two steps forward, one step back type of thing, you know. So um, th- there's no doubt that, that he has it in him. Um, and and it, it, it's also very possible that, that it could take some time. Matt Tate, our guest, he, uh, he writes about KU athletics for R1S1sports.com, Wave the Wheat. That's row one, seat one. Uh, how you enjoying this new gig? And then I want to ask you yeah. on the second uh, on the second part of that, uh, Jeff Grimes has an incredible resume. Uh, I know KU fans uh, would like to have a word with him at the moment, but this nobody <laughs> expected this stuff. It, it's it's crazy uh, what's happened with Kansas out of the shoot. And when I said that they still have opportunities. They don't play Utah. They don't play Oklahoma State. Uh, they don't play Arizona, and they don't play UCF in this crazy jumbled uh, new world right. of college football conference alignment. So uh, they're they're missing some of the big ones. Yeah, there's no doubt. And and you know this week's big because right now there's no room for error. I think that's what the two losses has done. It's it's it, it hasn't hurt them in the Big Twelve standings or in their goal of competing for a Big Twelve title, but. They just can't take any more losses right now for the for the mentality and the and the fragile nature of the program right now. I mean, one more would be would would bring some more questions and some more fan scrutiny and all that stuff, right? So this week is huge, um, and, and it's on the road, and that's obviously always tougher. So um, big big game there, but you're right, the schedule is 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 very favorable, and that's why the expectations were so high. I mean, it's a good football team, but it's also a good football team that faces a really favorable schedule. And that's why you had people talking about big 12 title and college football playoff and, and, and not just, you know, people around here, but some of the national, you know, college analysts were talking about it too. So, you know, it, it happens. Nobody saw it coming, but it, it's definitely about what they do from here and, and how they respond to it. And Lance Leipold's built to, to coach players and, and, and teams to respond to this kind of stuff. And, and these guys have been, you know, a, a true reflection of what he's all about really almost since day one. So I, I think they're, they're up for the challenge of responding, and, and we get to find out Saturday. But, but to answer your first question, I, I really enjoy the, the new gig. You know, it was 20-plus it was years at the Journal World here in Lawrence and, and you know, chasing down every, every possible news angle and, and, and being a true beat guy and, and – trying to break stories and, and trying to find out, you know, what happened and, and reading arrest reports and, and all kinds of things that the job entailed. And, and this one's much more uh, feature oriented. This one's a lot more about just tell the stories of who these kids are and what makes them tick and, 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 you know, their experiences as, as Kansas athletes. So it's allowed me to do some really cool stuff and some different stuff than I was doing for the past 20 years. And, and, for that, I've really enjoyed it, and I've really enjoyed it when there's been some breaking news that I don't have to even react to, really. I, if I want to do anything with go. it, I can kind of do an analysis or a, a column-type reaction to it, but I certainly don't have to get it up before everybody else, and I'm not in the rat race there anymore. So for that reason and for more time with my family, I'm, I'm enjoying the heck out of it, so I appreciate you asking. Who are, who are you, Adrian Wojnarowski, for crying out loud? That's exactly... <laughs> Some of the reasons he gave for his uh, isn't it funny? Show isn't decision. it funny? <laughs> yeah. And and go hey, Matt, figure. In this world go we ahead. live in, he, in this world we live in, he got torn apart for it. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Yeah. You know, no, no, it's it's a real thing. I, I, uh, I that 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 bit he said about or Adam Schefter said about the the phone in the shower to see a text coming through through the glass doors. You know, you've probably been there. I know I've been there, and and uh, it's a real thing. So. It, it's been a nice change of pace, and, and I'm enjoying it. And and, uh, and there's a lot of great stories to be told at KU, and, and and not just with football and basketball. That's one of my favorite parts. You know, I'm I'm telling right. stories about golfers and, and soccer players and volleyball, and and you know, we're really trying to 
hit all the programs and all the athletes because they all have their own unique story, and some of them are pretty incredible. So I, I've, I've really enjoyed it. All right. Well, we appreciate it. KU again on the road at West Virginia, 11 o'clock kickoff uh, coming up Saturday. Matt Tate has been our guest. Matt, thank you. Yeah, great to talk to you guys. Thanks for having me, and uh, don't be a stranger. I'm ready anytime. All Thank right, you. We, we definitely will. All right, there you go, a little KU update with Matt Tate.